afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. This is the day the Lord has made, and of course, we are rejoicing and glad in it. Good morning, good afternoon, <laughs> and for some of you, good evening, whatever you're listening to this. Praise God. David said this, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. And that's what we're on here today, praise God, every day, Tuesday through Friday at 11 a.m. and Sunday at 11 a.m. just to bring you the living word of God. So, Dr. Amen. Bev, give him a great welcome at this time. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good night to for some of those that's in other countries. We just praise and thank God that you're staying up with us this morning. And we know that God is getting ready to do some awesome things in our life today. So we just want to just sit back and just let God do it because God is in no stress, no struggle or strain today. Amen. So just go on and just relax in, in the things of God. Amen. All right. Praise God. Well, we got a great word for you today. Amen. You know, some things that, you know, I was thinking about today that, you know, we, you know, our lesson today is going to be on relying on God alone to prosper. Yes. And I was thinking about this. As you think about relying on God alone, sometimes we, we kind of say that, but then in our own mind, we're still trying to figure out how God going to do it. Yes. Amen. And I remember what the Bible talks about as far as the kingdom of God. Jesus said this, the kingdom of God operates as a man that puts seed into the ground. He goes to sleep mm -hmm. and he rises day and night yes. and the seed should spring up. It says he knoweth not how. Mm -hmm. So in other words, he said, you don't, have to, you don't have to know how the seed comes up for it to come up because it's something that God has already ordained. So we're talking about today about how to rely on there for God alone. Amen. To, uh, to prosper you because, you know, uh, the devil is always trying to find different ways oh, yeah. to get us to move out of the spiritual into the physical realm, get us out of focus, get us out of our lane. Well, we, instead of moving forward, we start stopping. Praise God. Sometimes even go backwards. So that's our title today, mm -hmm. uh, relying on God alone to prosper you. And, 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 my, and our point number one is this, stop begging I mean, I'm sorry, see begging as a reproach. That's, That's right. the first thing. You have to Amen. see that, that begging is not your lot. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Going around asking for this person and that person and this person and trying to get them to, you know, hopefully yeah. they'll give you some money. Man, we tried that before. That does not work in Jesus' mm -hmm. name. Praise God. So, Dr. Bill, let's read our first scripture there in the book of Psalms, chapter 37 and verse number 5. Amen. I'm going to read it out of one translation and, and, and the second translation. Okay, Another good. translation. Psalms 37, verse 20. I have been young and now I am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And then the other translation, which is the voice translation, it says, through my whole life, young and old, mm -hmm. I have never witnessed God forsaken those who do right, nor have I seen their children begging for crumbs, because they are always giving and sharing. Truly, their children are a joyful blessing. <laughs> That's a blessing. Amen. Yes. God. I've never seen him. Amen. My whole and, life. In his whole life. <laughs> and, and see, and, and David was a man of God's own heart. Yes. And see, think about this. You know, let's bring it into the now. Mm -hmm. Think about the president's uh, daughters right now. Mm -hmm. Think about President uh, Trump's uh, daughter and sons, Ivanka. Have you ever saw Ivanka down the street saying, please give me some money. Please okay. give me a handout. How about Don Jr. or Tiffany uh, or Eric? You've never seen any of his kids out there talking about, please give me some money. No, because they know their, who their father is. That's right. And they understand that they don't have to go around begging. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, would be a, it would be a reproach to their father for them to be going out begging. How, how about the Obama children? You know, uh, Sasha and Malia. Right. What would you do if you saw them out there? Mm. You know what I mean? You know, uh, 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 going out there borrowing this, begging for this, please help me out. Please, can you help me? Please, can you help me? That would be a reproach to the Obama yes. family. That's right. Are uh, you following me? And how, how about the Bush family, as rich as they are? Mm -hmm. How about uh, Jenna and Barbara, their That's children? Right. What if you saw them out there, you know, begging? <laughs> Praise God. Please help me. Please no. help me. No, that would be a reproach. Yes, it would. How much more you and I are children of the king? That's right. How much more you and I are children of God? Like right. Dr. Bell read that scripture about, I, David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. And you know what? You and I are the seed of Almighty God. Yes, we are. And therefore, we have to break. And so we're talking about how to rely today uh, on God alone to prosper you. Your, your father, a man, loves you, and he knows exactly what you need. But the thing is, how do we learn to do that? Because, again, 
<clears throat> we've had a difficult time doing that. Uh -huh. Now, I know when I was coming up, I had no problem knowing that every week my, my, my father would come home and give my mother the check, praise God, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and my mother would go buy groceries. I never, I never had to think about or pray about, I wonder if my dad's going to bring the, the food on this week. I wonder yeah. if he's going to give the check on this week. That was never a thought in our mind right. because as children, we trusted our father. Okay. And it would have been a reproach for us knowing that he was providing for us to go out begging for bread. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and and the same thing about God right now. We have we have the same God today that if our earthly father was like that. Now you might say, but Dr. Craig, I didn't have an earthly father like him. My father didn't even support me. Well, this is a good time for you to set a new generation. Amen. For you to begin to establish this in your life so that your children can get, begin a chance to see God as a father on the earth through you yes. and how you can teach them this scripture. Right. I've never seen the righteous yes. forsaken know his seed begging for bread. Mm -hmm. Amen. So there's nothing mm -hmm. that God could do for us mm -hmm. that he's not already done. That's right. But his people, the thing is, have no, no knowledge of how to access it. Mm. Knowing that Jesus has paid a price for you and I to be the envy of the world. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. So, so we got to recognize this, that you and I have been, uh, we've been redeemed to rule and to reign right. as kings and not for bread. It's just Amen. really sad when you see churches out there on, on, on Saturdays having car washes, having bake sales, having barbecues, just to pay the electricity Jesus. bill, to pay the rent for the church. And sometimes, you know, people are trying to pay rent for their own selves. I'm telling you, that right there is a yeah. reproach to the children yes, of God. Yes, now, I'm not putting nobody, I'm not judging anybody, but we need to begin to, Bible says, my people have been destroyed for right. the lack of knowledge. And that is not the will of God. It is a reproach, amen, amen to your father for you to be begging for bread amen. and be forsaken in Jesus' name. But Dr. Bell, I want you to read uh, uh, Romans chapter number 5 and verse number 17 for a moment. For if by one man's offense mm -hmm. death reigned by one, mm -hmm. much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. So look what it says there. That mm -hmm. you and I, mm -hmm. just like through Adam, death reigned. Mm -hmm. And Satan really took advantage of that in those areas. Mm -hmm. It said, much more us that have not received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness yes. should now reign in life by one, by one. and that's Jesus Christ. Yes. And I like what the Amplified Bible says in there. Dr. Bell, what does the Amplified mm -hmm. Bible say there? For if because of one man's trespass, mm -hmm. lapse, offense, death reign through that one, mm -hmm. much more surely will those who receive God's over flowing grace, unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself. Reign as kings in life through one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Here is, he takes it up a notch. He said we should be reigning as kings in yes. life. Yes, <laughs> Glory to should. God. Amen. So, that, so that's the thing. God is telling us that you know that that we should be reigning as kings in life and i've never seen a king or his kids mm -hmm. out there begging for bread sure. amen and so the whole goal is it's not that god has to do anything different mm -hmm. it's that we need a revelation yes and that's one reason i got this curtain behind us now because i'm saying it's time for us to go behind the curtain yes. and step out of the natural realm step out of the things we've learned through our five senses and mm -hmm. say we, you, you got to do this you got to do this you're gonna get ahead and understand that we have a father god yes, who is a king King and has made you and I kings. And he said that because you're my children, I want you to reign as kings in life. Praise Glory God. to God. Praise and that means everything spiritual, mm -hmm. that means everything physical, mm -hmm. and everything financial. I want you to begin to reign in life. And that's coming to the body of Christ. Praise Many God. people are experiencing it already, but now it's coming to you. Now and so I encourage you to study this material that I'm teaching you right now because God is saying that now is the time, yes, <laughs> praise God, for you and I to begin to reign as kings spiritually. Yes physically and financially in that's Jesus right. name. Now that's very important, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So so notice here in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse number 21. For he had made him to be sin for us mm -hmm. who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now that's very important. Yes. That 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 you know trust in God for your finances and relying on him alone, you can know, number one, that Jesus Christ became sin for you. Yes. Now, I remember years ago, you know, coming out from the world, 
I mean, church people still looked at you based upon uh, uh, your natural side. Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, if you, you know, the women were the long enough dressed, you had the earrings off, you know, uh, and, and, and didn't go to the movies and things like that, then that made you live in ri a righteous life. Oh and it got many people hooked on the fact that yeah. maybe, you know, the reason why God is not moving in your life, because you got the earrings on. See. You, got, you got that nail polish on. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. And a matter of fact, the, the head bishop told it said to me, he said, he said, Brother Craig, you go, you can get a, you got a great, you got a great uh, potential in your life. He said, but you, your wife is gonna be a whole because she still wasn't that nail polish. Jesus. I mean, they literally said that to me. And the thing is that that because those things get in your mindset, yeah. you really believe that that's that, right. But you got you got to see this. The Bible said God made Jesus to be, to be sin for us. Thank you, Lord. That we <laughs> might be made. The mm. very righteousness yes. of God. I mean that we're supposed to reign as people That's who right. are the righteousness, not just righteous, but the righteousness of God. Mm. That means you, your righteousness and, and Jesus' righteousness is the same because he became the sin for you and took your place as a, in sin. And so that and he gave you his standing as righteous. Amen. So now he said, you and I are the righteousness of God. So it's time for you and I to stop letting people Thank bring you. us under their authority. That's right. uh, uh, under their rule, under their religion, and, and let's snap out of that in Jesus' amen. name, amen, and recognize we are right now the righteousness of God. No matter what kind of clothes you wear, you're still righteous, glory to God. Amen. Taking the makeup, not putting the makeup on, you're still righteous, still amen. Righteous. You got to understand that your righteousness is of God and stop being sin conscious, trying to do all these right. natural things in the natural to try to please people That's or, right. try to, or try to uh, uh, come up to religious mm -hmm. rules and guidelines. Like, mm -hmm. That is not what's holding your blessing back. Amen. The Bible says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. That's right. My people have gone to captivity because they have no knowledge. And that's mm -hmm. what the Spirit of God is bringing today. He's bringing knowledge and revelation to the people of God. We, the people have been shouting on it. Oop. They've been preaching on it. Uh -huh. And getting happy on it, but not being experienced. Because they can go right and preach on all this and shout and still have a bake sale this on the, on the weekend. My still God. have a car wash on the weekend. My Come help out. We're having a barbecue this coming Sunday. Because they're teaching it, they're preaching it, they're shouting on it, but they have no revelation of it. Amen. And that's why Jesus told Peter, upon this rock, that's I'm going right. to build my church. Mm -hmm. And that was a church that would be built on revelation and knowledge. Mm -hmm. that, that, that not, he's just Jeremiah, so probably he's the Christ. The son of the living God. Amen. Amen. So praise God. This is so important. Yes, it is. And, and so you and I, God has given us such a, a, a wonderful redemption that oppression of sickness, oppression of disease, opp the oppression of the devil that tries to bring a spiritual darkness on our lives or the, the oppression of the devil trying to bring uh, 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 financial uh, mm -hmm. oppression in our lives. Mm -hmm. We, the Bible says, that not supposed to be on any of us. Right. Dr. Bell, I want you to read for me Isaiah chapter 54 and verse number 14. Isaiah 54 verse 14. In righteousness shalt uh -huh. thou be established. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Mm -hmm. For thou shalt not fear and from terror for it shall not come near mm. thee. Isn't that a blessing? Far from oppression. Far from oppression. That means that we should be far from a spiritual oppression of the devil. Okay. Okay. We should be far from spiritual, uh, physical oppression of sickness and disease. Mm -hmm. We should be far from oppression of financial lack and things like that. As a matter of fact, Acts 10, 38 says this, how God anointed Jesus yes. of Nazareth, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. See, so, so you and I should be far from oppression. That's right. But why are so many Christians still dep depressed and oppressed? You know, in order for the devil to oppress, you got to first of all depress you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And depression means I don't know what my future is going to look like. Mm -hmm. He said, now I can get them, I can oppress my them right God. now. But when you understand that you're righteous and Bible says you're going to be established in righteousness, then you're going to be far from the oppression of the devil. That's right. And it's time for the men and women of God, amen, to get far Come from on. that oppression. Amen. I, I know so a few years ago, when we went through some things in the ministry, mm -hmm. you know, when, you know, uh, when uh, that 2008 uh, recession happened and things yes. like that, it just, it, it just affected everybody. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know that people lost jobs, people lost homes, mm -hmm. people was walking away from their homes and things like Jesus. that. It was, it, the oppression of that thing was so bad. Oh, yeah. Are uh, you farming? And it, it even affected our, mini our ministry in a, in, in, right. in a great way. 
And for a minute there, you know, people that I thought would never leave, left, <laughs> you follow me? People that I thought would be with me, uh, I, I, no matter what happened, I had people say, Dr. Craig, I would never leave you. Man, they, soon they happened, they, they left too, are you following me? And so for a while, the devil tried to depress me because oh, yeah. of that. Like, man, who can I really trust in right, like that? Right, right. And that oppression of the devil was really fighting my mind. Mm -hmm. But I understood, see, that that's what I'm telling you right now, relying on God that's alone. Right. For your prosperity. That's right. That I don't care if it's recession, oppression, or whatever it is, <laughs> famine, or whatever it is, God don't have no oppression. Amen. God don't have no recession. Amen. That's right. and, and I remember what Miles Monroe said this, Dr. Miles Monroe said this. He said, Your faith is only as strong as the person you have it in. My God. See, so when you got your faith in people, mm -hmm. that they're going to come through for you, mm -hmm. and they don't, it brings you into a state of depression. Yes. Well, you know, what am I going to do now? Nobody's with me. Everybody want to leave me. No, no, no. See, it's yeah. because your faith had been, you <laughs> thought you had faith in God. Right, right. But the fact that the people hurt you mm -hmm. when they left you or didn't come through for you mm -hmm. mean your faith was in them and not with, for, with God. And that's, that's, a, right. that's a tough thing. Mm -hmm. But we got to swallow that thing. So, okay, God, I, I missed it. Amen. I allowed that thing to get me out of focus. And get me out of my lane and trying to do natural things, trying to, you know, make this thing happen. And it really is because we are, you, you, your faith is in people yes. and not in God. So it's right. time for us now, no matter where you are right now, to, to rely totally on God alone for your prosperity. So how are we going to do that? Number one, we're going to declare everything. Declare it. Amen. That makes you a beggar among men over. Come on. As of today, hey, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Everything that makes you a beggar, but you oh have to see, God. you're trying to hope people going to come through for you. Mm -hmm. You got, As of today, you got to start declaring all of that begging, all that asking, all that going from one person to the other, trying to get them to do for me. It's over as of today. Hey. Amen. I'm, I'm going to learn how that I'm a child of God. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a child of the king. Matter of fact, I am a king according to the Amen. word of God. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm the reign as king of the life. So as of today, I'm declaring that, that, that everything that makes me a beggar among men mm -hmm. as of the day is over. Amen. Amen. And you got to recognize that you work for God. That's right. Amen. Praise yes, God. And, uh, and so when you work for God, you know, people are saying, well, you know, you're not a part of organization. Yeah, we are part of it. It's called the God, the God, the Godization. Amen. <laughs> You have, because you know, ever since I've been in ministry, you know, I, I you know, I, I, when I first started in ministry, I was a part of an organization, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and and they made you feel that if you left that organization, that you were gonna go down. You follow me? And so a lot of people was held in that by fear. If I leave, I ain't gonna make it. You know what I mean? And yet when I left, when I when I when I I didn't just leave it. I almost got booted out. I got the left foot of fellowship because because I started hanging around Dr. Price and I was I was hungry for the word of God and all they were doing is shouting and selling drinking there. That's I, I this I know more than this. I came from the business where I knew better than that. Mm -hmm. And so that you know, kind of like they just kind of really forsook me in that area, yeah. like put me out and say I'll never become nothing because I I, I was hanging. They said I was hanging around that cult, Dr. Price, and like that. But really, that cult was helping me out. Praise oh, God! Really? It was it was letting me know about the real Jesus. Glory to God! And so the thing is. Is that, you know, uh, I came out from that mm -hmm. and people said, you, you're not going to make it. And so I said, but God, I know what you're teaching me is correctly. Yeah, that's right. And like I said, so from that point on, uh, 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 I didn't have any organization backing me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's when I really learned how to trust God alone right. in my life. Are uh, you following me in those areas? And then again, I remember we went through ministry school. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, it was kind of like, you know, maybe Dr. Price, Dr. Price got this big faith dome. At that time, I think his ministry was like, I think $30 million a year in his ministry, something like that. I said, surely he could help me out. Praise God. He Dr. Price told he said, look, I ain't going to give you nothing. Right. He said, if you listen to what I'm telling you, That's right. he said, what I'm teaching you will work. He yes, said, so I'm not, he, he, didn't, he didn't give us no, we went through three years of ministry school. He didn't give us a microphone. He, 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 didn't, he didn't give us no chair. He didn't give us nothing, build nothing. nothing. He said, if you, if you listen to what I'm teaching you, it's going to work for you. <laughs> and he was teaching all the time in class. He said, getting an A here in class is not what's important. That's it's right. getting an A, a out there is what's That's important. Right. And he taught us how to keep, make, keep God and rely on him alone are you following? Not Amen. him. Amen. Listen to what he was saying. And, and he said, it's going to work for you. That's right. and, and, and it was a blessing. Thank God that, that it works. Amen. Yes. It worked then and it still works today in Jesus' name. Yes. Because you don't have to beg for other people. That's you don't right. need an organization behind you. Don't, you know, there's nothing wrong with being connected to people. Nothing wrong with being connected to, to people right. that, that, that given, it's adding value to your life. Mm -hmm. But don't allow no organization or no person to lord over you through fear. That's like right. if you don't be a part of them, what they're 
doing, some kind of way you're not going to make it. Right. And you, you have to totally rely on God yes. and his promises because his promises are sure and they they will work if you work them. Because I know even when I was in ministry school also and you know, and, and I, Dr. Gray, he was getting all kind of A's and he wasn't, I mean, he had his head down just writing verbatim word for word. And I'm sitting there looking and, and, and trying to ingest what he was saying, but, but st I was still getting low C's, but I just praise and thank God that I got the word anyhow, because Dr. Price, he's seen how discouraged I was getting because he had to like the class, you know, ask, you know, you know, I mean, not, he, he would ask the class, you know, what was your grade? You had to get, you know, say out loud what your grade was. And Lord Jesus, I did not want to say what my grade was. And then he seen how I was kind of getting despondent. And so he called me up after during our break time. And he said, you know what? Don't worry about getting an A in this class. I just want to make sure that you get an A out there in the world. So you just go forth and just do what God has called you to do. And that just set me free. I wasn't so much worried about an A. Because a, a, a in education, you know, it may be good for, for the world, but we need, we are not in the world, but we are of the world. Praise God. So I just praise and thank God that that word that he gave me really helped me to go forward in life. And, and I just praise and thank God right now. All I'm getting is favor. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. That's it. Total Fa favor. Favor will help you. Well, things happen. Thank it's, you. And I say the same thing. Because like I yeah. said, you know, uh, people that, and this is not putting on it, can thank God for good that's, education. I'm yes. putting it down. Amen. But there's people that's got educated that are A students, can't even, yeah. can't even find a job. That is so true. And, 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 and they got, they got master degree, can't even find a job. Yeah. So the thing is, is the thing is you want the favor with God. Amen. I'm not putting it, thank God for good education. I'm putting Amen. that down. That's but right. you want the favor of God and yeah. you want to be able to get, like Dr. Bill, I said, an A out here in life. Yeah. Get this word to work. There's yeah. folks that can quote the Bible from Genesis Revelation, but they can't get it to work in their lives. Amen. But if you, if you got one scripture mm -hmm. that you get a revelation that's from, it. my God, that's enough <laughs> to take you from the, yeah. from the, from the, get, from the guttermost to the uttermost, Amen. praise God. Jesus and my should be built upon revelation. Right. And that's what we need more than anything else is when we begin to start saying that our money comes from God. Amen. Our income comes from God. Yes. We've got to switch employers. That's right. Amen. And recognize that, that you may be the owner of your business, but switch that. Amen. You're the manager and God is the owner. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You may say, this is my church. No, 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 no. You, if the church belongs to Jesus and he's given you the privilege of managing it for him. Amen. Are you following me? Because you got you got to switch that around. You're not dependent on you. You're not dependent on these these sponsors. Say, well, we the ones supporting your church. Well, man, you got to let let them folks go because yes. they because when they drop you, you're gonna think like, man, what? Maybe God did it. Let me tell you something. It's time to rely on God right. alone God to meet alone. your needs in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. So you don't need a letter. You know, for the last what over forty five years, mm -hmm. I've not had a job where. I could depend on somebody Amen. you know else to pay pay my check. Amen. Ever since I got out of high school in 1971, mm -hmm. I started in business as a hairdresser in 1972. Ever since then, my Amen. income depended on my ability to get people to walk through those doors. That's right. I either find or to, or to pick up that phone and call, say I want you to do my hair. Mm -hmm. And then from there I went into full-time ministry again, not having nobody uh, writing me a check where I could be guaranteed a check. Right. So I had to, in a, in a way, you know, uh, trust, mm -hmm. uh, uh, start trusting God in an unconscious yes, way. Yes. Where, you know, in and, and, and those areas. And, 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 you know, when I got, when I first started doing that, I was stressed out because, you know, when I was on a farm as a kid, we had a check coming in, you know. <laughs> but now I ain't got no check coming in. My check is dependent upon my totally. personal performance That's right. and my gifting at work and developing myself. So as I'm saying today, you gotta learn that because some of you, you 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 you've always had that guaranteed check. Yes. Whether you whether you cussed or didn't cuss, you still right. been, whether That's you right. whether you committed adultery, they committed adultery, you still got your check because you're working for your job. That's but right. When it comes down to trusting God, come on. Are you if I'm, you gotta learn how to trust God alone yes. now yes. and not in that check because uh, uh, you know nothing wrong with a good nothing nothing wrong with a good job. Thank God for a good job. Thank God for that good check. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about yeah. now beginning to rely on God yes. alone. Yes. And as your source, mm -hmm. and and that's what people are getting wrong. I've I've been wrong in that area before myself. And I, I remember Doctor Doctor Mamaro said he said your faith your is faith. only as strong as the person you have it in. That's right. Amen. Praise God. So now as we look at this, then mm -hmm. let's look at this. So uh, this is my third point. Mm -hmm. Don't rely on your resources 
or man's sponsorship. Thank you. There's always people say, you know, we, you know, we're the ones sponsoring this thing. You know, we're the one doing this for y'all. Mm. And, and let me tell you something. Thank God for partnership. Thank God for the people that you know that that love us and that partner with us. Amen. But I'm telling you something, sense of God, you've got to you know uh, uh, not depend upon people that try to use that mm -hmm. as as leverage right. over you. Are uh, you following those there? Because there are people that are do that. Oh, one yeah. time we were gonna get an airplane. We, we were talking about getting an airplane one time, Amen. and there was our just, faith was at that level. Our faith was at that level, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 so we, we all started believing off in the money and manifest. Yeah. And this one lady, she gave about what not ten dollars something like that. Right. After about six months, she said, "Well, where is that airplane? I I, I gave toward that airplane. You gave like ten dollars. <laughs> like she said, like that ten dollars really made a big difference in those areas. Thank God for that. Yeah, yeah. But you kind of watch people that feel like they're the ones right. sponsoring you." Sponsoring your ministry right. or sponsoring you and your business. No, are you following? Amen. They're not. You you got to switch what God is your sponsor. God is your partner. And anybody he touches their heart to partner with you is coming from God and not through them being able to use their influence. Now, since I'm part of you, give me a, 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 a seat in your church. Yeah. No, you don't get that. Amen. Are you following? You, can, you can't play those kind of games that like that That's when right. God is your sponsor. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, look here what Jesus told his disciples when he when he sent them out mm -hmm. uh, in Luke chapter number ten and verse number one. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them out two and two mm -hmm. before his face into every city and place where would he himself would come. Mm -hmm. So you can see uh -huh. here that when Jesus sent them out. Mm -hmm. He said he he appointed them. Mm -hmm. They were not appointed by the organization. Come on. They were not appointed by the denomination. Jesus appointed them and he sent them out yes. before his face mm -hmm. and every city where he will come. And what I'm, what I'm going to show you here in, th in this particular thing is that, mm -hmm. that Jesus is your employer. Come on. Are you following me? And he is the one that takes care of your check. Come on. And we're going to learn about that more this week. We're going to get into this. Mm -hmm. So you and I... No matter what we're doing, whether you're in business for yourself or whether you're in ministry, you got to start seeing God as your employer. That's right. Amen. And don't lobby around any man's resources and learn that you don't want to go to them asking right. for anything. Mm -hmm. Notice what Jesus Christ told them in verse number four as he, as he sent them out. In verse number four. Carry neither purse nor strip mm -hmm. nor shoes. And salute no man by the way. So notice he's saying, uh, when you go out there, don't take your purse. Man, don't you don't have to go out there at your own expense. Right there you, you go. It's uh -huh. not about your savings account and your checking mm -hmm. account. Mm -hmm. He said, don't take no purse or script with you, nor shoes with you. My God. And don't no salute no man by the way, because because you don't want to give nobody the credit. Right. I'm your employer. Right. I'm sending you out. I'm going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. Now that's a whole different mindset. Yes, it is. Whole different mindset mm -hmm. that you but you got to get a hold to that. Like I said, it's a little easier for me because I've always been that kind of person that that was in business. Mm -hmm. Even when I got in the ministry, I had to depend on people to walk through the door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you follow me, and I had to trust that they're gonna come back the next Sunday. Yes. Amen. And I had to trust that, you know, in in, in, a, in a way, you know, whether I was in business or whether I was in ministry, I had to develop that confidence in God that He was the one bringing them in in those yes. areas. Amen. And so He said, "But don't carry a purse with you." That's right. That means don't depend on your own resources. That's right, because he wants God. Want, God wants us to trust him totally, and if he tells us to do something, we ought to do it to the max. Not think about you know. Well, I don't know if this is God or not, but if it, if, if God put that in your heart, he knows what he want to do. But it's but it's your job to just go ahead and just walk it out. And if he told him, don't bring no purse, don't wear no shoes when you go into those people's houses. He said, I got you. Just you just go ahead and just live by faith. You just walk and do what I have called you to do. And that's why it's so important to make yes. sure that you're called by God. That's, you have to. I mean, and, and then make sure you're hearing from God. Yes. Because uh, I did go out before and yes. God, didn't, God didn't tell me to go. All right. I, I went out before. <laughs> I went out because people said, yeah. if you're really in faith, you should not be working on no job. Right. And also, so I messed around and stopped working on my job. We ended up in the bottom of the church, praise oh, yeah. God, on food stamps. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because, because it wasn't God that sent me out. I was called by God, but right. he hadn't sent me out like That's that. Right. You know, in, in other words, I remember Dr. Price told us that you should only leave your job and go into full-time ministry mm -hmm. when your ministry can at least match the salary that you need. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you've been living at fifty thousand dollars a year and now you're you're, you're going to go work for the church for twenty thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. you, your wife, and your kids gonna be mad. Yes. <laughs> Are you following me? Yes. Because <laughs> because it's hard to live on that when you and your sisters up here. 
-hmm. And then you're hoping that somebody else come through for you. Mm -hmm. But if God sends you out yes. and it's him sending you out, I remember when, when I when I did make the transition, I, I, I continued to have, to work in my little shop. I, when I, even after I got out of ministry school, right. I continued to have a little, a little shop there while I continued to make money on the side until my yeah. until the church came to the point where my income was being equaled hey. or, or it was an, or it was enough to take care of my present expenses. Mm -hmm. From that point on, I went full time mission away yes. from the job, and that's been like over almost thirty years ago. And I've not went back to my job since then. Amen. But I made sure that before I made that decision. Because I, I did it about twice before that, and end up broke. Right. <laughs> Man, praise God. So you got to make sure the Lord is the one sending you out, yes, and you got His confirmation, and you're not just trying to do things. I remember Dr. Price told us this. He said, "Don't never do something to prove to people that you have faith. My God. Do it because you have faith. Amen. In other words, you make sure your faith is at that level, and don't never do it to prove people. Man, I don't quit my job. I'm I'm full time now, but yet you 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 you're going around from this person that person might say I help you, and they don't help you. I don't know why people are not helping me. I'm trying to do full time ministry. See, you God is not your employer. Amen. You're still depending upon people for your support. That is so. And you you're not going out in faith. You follow me? But faith does work. Mm -hmm. Faith does work. Yes, it does. When you work it. When you work it. But your faith got to grow. Yes, it does. Jesus measured faith. He said, no faith, little faith, mm -hmm. great faith, full of faith, strong faith, yes. weak faith. He said your faith is at different levels. Amen. You need to bring your faith up to a certain level mm -hmm. to be to manifest what you need in your life. And, and mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it does work. Yes, it does. In, and, yes. And, and what, what, what happens is like a lot of uh, ministers that's ministering, mm -hmm. you know, you want to minister, you want to get out there and you want to do something, but you still have to wait on God in that because so many ministers, will, well, they don't want to let me preach. You got the whole world out there. Go out yeah. there, go out into the world and preach. And because what you want to do, you want to, you want to make somebody thank you that you are pastor or, 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 or get into, you know, get into, you know, confrontation or, 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 or start teaching things that, you know, you have no clue of what you're teaching about, but you just have to know that if God called you, mm -hmm. he will supply all your needs. You don't have to go and prove nothing to nobody. You just have to just know if it's God, it'll work out there in the world. Amen. All you, you can know one scripture and you could take it out to the world and you can have people following you all. You don't have to do everything right there in the church. You don't have to prove yourself to nobody what God has done for you in your life. That's right. That's true. That's right. And, and, and notice what he, Jesus is going to tell him in, in, yes. in verse 5. He, he, he teaches him a little bit further. But what do you say in verse 5? And enter in, and into whatsoever house ye enter. First say, peace be to this house. Verse 6. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. Verse 7. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking, such things as they give. For the labor is worthy of its hire. Go not from house to house. Isn't that good? He yes. said, so he said, when you go out there, don't yes. care them for you because right. I've already got people yes, that I've got in place going to take care of you. Yes. He said, so he said, don't go from house to house, though. All right. You know, help me help. He said, no, if you find a place where the people accept what you're sharing, on, God going to use them yes. to meet your need. Amen. Are you following? Mm -hmm. And he said that and whatever they provide, that's what that's what you receive right. from them. He said, but don't go from house to house. Mm. Don't, try, don't, don't try to manipulate your way through the thing. Right. He said, I'm sending you out. Are you following? He said the laborer, he says in verse 7, is worthy of his hire. That's right. And so he said, if you're laboring for God, you're worthy of the hire. And God said, I'm going to see to it that you are, per, are taken care of yes. fully in Jesus' yes, name. Now, so look, look at this then. So the thing is, we got to understand that, that God's blessing is on your life. Mm -hmm. you you got to get a revelation of that, mm -hmm. that the blessing of God is on your life in those areas. Right. And when God blesses a man or woman, then, then no devil, this is now, no devil can attempt to reverse it. Thank you. When God's blessings on you. Amen. No witch Hello. and no demons Amen. can stop the blessings on your life. Amen. And every force of darkness will be dis dismembered. Yes. Amen. And you'll see God glorifying his word in your life. Once you, under, you, you, you switch over and say, you know what, now I'm relying on God. Yes, totally. I mean, ladies, you can't rely on your husband. Husband, you can't rely on your wife. You can't rely on your kids. You know, some people say, well, my kid will take care of me. You got to uh, stop depending on them kids. Your kids got their own life to live. Yeah, Are you yeah. following me? It's, it's God. So you, so you got to depend on God. You got to really trust God yes, in, in your life. Praise God. Uh, and because if you don't trust God, 
Then again, I like Malcolm Rose said, your faith is only as strong as the person you have in the end. And you got your trust in people and, and, and they leave you, you're going to be discouraged and feel like yes, quitting. And it's right. time to, to make the switch make it. in the name of Jesus. Look here, God says, because people are going to always try to hold you back. Oh, yeah. Because when God doesn't come on your life, because you're a blessing, it's going to take place in your life. I'm going to teach you this, this whole week. His blessing is going to be in your life. You've got to recognize that God's going to bless people that's bless you. Mm -hmm. What does Genesis chapter 12, verse number 3 say? And I will bless them that bless thee, mm -hmm. and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. See, God says he's going yes. to cause people to be blessed Ooh, through you. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. but, but it's God doing it. It's, it's, it's you relying on God to do it. Right. And God says that, he says, uh, anybody that blesses you, I'm going to bless them. Uh -huh. I think one scripture says, uh, anybody that, that, that confers prosperity on, uh, on you, he's going to confer prosperity on them. Yes. And anybody that tries to curse you, uh -huh. going to be cursed, trying yes. to curse you. Yes. And he said, because in you, all families of the earth can be blessed. That means people in the earth, God going to use you to be a blessing to people yes. in there. And that's when God is doing it. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you know, I did not understand that fully in my life because I tried it so many times doing what people was doing. Mm -hmm. But God has allowed me, once I got a hold of this, yes. myself and Dr. Bell, to travel the world mm -hmm. and be a blessing to people. Amen. And f many families of the earth throughout the world, mm -hmm. not just figuratively, mm -hmm. figuratively, but throughout the world. Mm -hmm are being blessed now as a result of the blessing and the favor of God that he's placed upon myself and my wife. Amen. And that's what I'm saying about you today. Amen. Even though I made some mistakes, I went out too quick, but I really got a hold to the revelation. Yes. Begin to walk in that. I'm seeing a whole good thing. As a matter of fact, it's amazing to me. My wife and I, we're here in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and for the first time in our lifetime, we had a little small house built mm -hmm. back in Coolidge, Arizona. It's been years ago. I think it cost about $11,000. It's been back in the, in the 70s, I think it was. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but since then, uh, we bought other houses, but it's the first house we built, had Amen. built. And in the midst of this, we're in Las Vegas, praise God. No physical building church up here, but through our faithful members there in Phoenix Amen. and through all my partners around the world, Hallelujah. God is blessing us in the midst of all this coronavirus and stuff like that Amen. to build a new house. Amen. And what I'm saying is because when God blesses you, nobody can curse you. Come on. And it's not about your hookups. Right. It's about his up, yeah, his up. being hooked with him <laughs> and following his plan for your life. Amen. And see, notice what, look, look, look what happened here. When, when, the, when, the, when the enemy tries to bless you, it, it, he can, you, you have an irreversible blessing on your life. Uh -huh. Amen. And, and we're going to look at Numbers for a moment, chapter number 23 and verse number 20. Behold, I have received commandments to bless, mm -hmm. and he hath blessed. And I cannot revert. Amen. In other words, that old Balaam kept I, trying to get him, uh, this prophet, to curse right, Israel. Right. And every time he would try to curse Israel, he said the blessing kept coming out. <laughs> Amen. And he said, I couldn't, I can't reverse, I can't reverse that blessing. You got to see that once you get a hold of the things of God, yes. you have an irrevisible blessing on your life uh -huh. that no witch, no demon, and no uh -huh. Ill, jealous and envious person can stop the blessing that's on your life in Jesus' name. And, and so we're going to be on this for the whole week. Hallelujah. For the whole week, teaching uh -huh. you some of these things about prosperity and how to really trust God and really get you switched over totally. Now, this does not mean that God can't use people to bless you, mm -hmm. but you need to recognize it's coming through people, but not from people. Amen. This is important in your life. That's the switch. It's just a switch of, of a mindset. Mm -hmm. It may come through people, mm -hmm. but not from people. Amen. Your prosperity is going to come from God. Amen. It is God, God says the Lord that has given you ability to get wealth. And you got to start seeing that. So that's this week's message this week, yeah. helping you make that transition to trust in God. Dr. Bell, final words. Amen. And so you just have to let the devil know, look here, I received a word of blessing and God has spoken a blessing and I cannot take it back. Amen. Glory <laughs> when God speaks to you, don't let the devil take that word from you. You just know that. It, it is a blessed word from God, and you're going to go ahead and continue to walk in what God has called you to do. If you, you know, you can't take it back. If God spoke it out, what you doing going the devil's way in the first place? You learn to do walk it out in Jesus' name because that blessing cannot be reversed into a curse. That's right, Hallelujah. praise God. And don't let nobody else do it. Right. People are like, well, I don't know because everybody don't believe it. No, it's not what everybody's believe. No, it's what, what you, you believe. believe. It's what God has said and what you believe. Amen. It, it, it's, it may look impossible, 
but it's possible. Yes, Amen. It yes, Praise it God. Is. Because why? Because God said it. And you and you're operating on what God has said. Amen. And then not only that, we are examples of it. Yes. We are true examples. For those of you that know our life, you know what we went through. And you know that God is with us. And if you know that God is, he said, you can say, well, God, you know, I don't have nobody that I can, you know, you know, uh, 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 trust or I don't know who I can uh, uh, compare my life to. We are your examples. You know that God is with us. So therefore, we just praise and thank God that you're on this journey with us. And we're on the journey with you also. Yes, that's right. Because when, <laughs> when God first spoke to us to come to Las Vegas, I mean, you know, we didn't really know anybody here. Nope. You know, we didn't have no church up here or anything like that. Well, all we know is we were sent by the Lord. Yes. <laughs> Amen. To come here. And, you know, and, 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 you know, and we just kind of like stayed in an apartment for a while. Yes. Because, you know, so, you know, we, you know until we hear Wait from God. And, 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 you know, because we know we, God spoke us about coming here, yeah. you know what I mean, and so we just stayed in this apartment. My, it was just me and my wife anyway. But we stayed in this apartment, nice apartment, but you know, it was it was not what we had been used to. Right. But but we knew that if we're in the plan of God and we're relying on Him, mm -hmm. He said the laborer is worthy of their reward, worthy. and He promised us houses and yes. land. He, yes. that's a, he said, "Blessed and He said that riches and honor should be in your house." Mm -hmm. So we knew that it was coming. Oh yeah. And so what my wife and I we started doing uh, all through June, July, we said, you know what? July the 15th, we'll never spend another July 15th in this apartment. <laughs> July the 17th come, we'll never spend another July 17th apartment. We started Trust. saying that. We started declaring that in Jesus' name that, that this is the last year we're going to be in an apartment. Because we know that God, God has given us houses before. But this time, God did not just give us a house. He's given us a brand new house Amen. built from the ground up. Uh -huh. So I'm telling you something. When we came, it didn't, so Lord, wait a minute, God, we're in an apartment. Right. <laughs> you follow me? We ain't been in an apartment in years. But guess what? God knows how to bring you out of all Amen. that into a wealthy place. And so again, stick with us this week. I'm going to teach you some things on this about how to rely on God and how to get this thing working in your life. Praise Amen. God. So it's been a great blessing with you. Of, of course, as we do all the time, you know, many of you are, my, of our, are our partners and you partner with us because you believe God has spoke to you to partner with us. <laughs> and, and, and I believe that as you do that, you know, we thank God for the blessing and the favor of God is bringing on your life. Whatever, when you partner with this ministry, yes. whatever favors on my step not to bail, also is on you because we're Amen. partners together. That's right. Are uh, you a farmer? You're helping us make this thing happen. Mm -hmm. So we are, we want to appreciate you as our partners you. for helping us make it happen Amen. in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And then maybe some of you that are not partners, say, Dr. Craig, I'd like to be a partner. I'm, I'm, I'm receiving, I'm learning from you and Dr. Bell, and how can I partner with you? Well, one of the ways, number one, to pray for us because, Amen. you know, some thing that God's got us doing here in Las Vegas, we're still getting a revelation of fully what God, how, what he wants to do and how he wants to do it here in Las Vegas. So mm -hmm. you, we need your prayers in those areas. Mm -hmm. Number two, you can partner with us financially. Amen. You know, and, and because the, the partner financially has a twofold thing to it. Number one, Paul says it meets, uh, Apostle Paul said in Philippians, it, it, it meets the needs that we have to carry on the ministry. But number two, he says that is, he, he, Paul said in Philippians, he said it's every time you give and you sow seed, he says that fruit is abounding to your account. Your account. So you're actually accumulating, Amen. every time you sow a seed, you're accumulating more into your spiritual bank account. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on, and, and, and as he gets down, he said, look, he said, because you're doing that, you're the doing seed that you're sowing mm -hmm. uh, into the ministry of an apostle is an offering of sweet smell and savor yes. going before God. Amen. This is Philippians chapter 4, verse 15 through 19. Mm -hmm. And then he said, because of that in verse 19, he said, but my God, my God. shall supply all your yes. need. What he's saying is that when you partner with an apostle and you and you become a part of that ministry, he said the same level of anointing that's right. that, that he operates in. That's what he said, my God. That means the same level of anointing that's on myself and Dr. Bev mm -hmm. will come on you, your business, and your ministry. That's right. But you're partnering with us. And he said, my God will supply all your needs. Listen to this now. <laughs> according to his riches and glory. Ooh. Not the organization you're part of. No. Not the ah. people that's trying, to, that's trying to, they said they're sponsoring you. Partners are not sponsors. Partners are those that we believe that God has uh -huh. called us to do this. You follow me? And we're doing it unto the Lord and not yeah. to people to get some kind of natural praise for it. You right, follow me? Right, right. But Jesus is going to give us praise for it. Thank God. He's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. But we're doing this together. So that's how you partner with us. And So the three ways you can do it. Number one, you can partner with us. But There's a link right there on Facebook. You can click that link. It'll take you directly to our giving area. You can just click that link and it'll take you right directly to there. Or number two, we have a cash out. Mm -hmm. Dollar sign, apostle I am. That's dollar sign, apostle I am. Or we have a website you can go to. It's a place you can give there at our website. Mm -hmm. It's iamministries.org. That's iamministries.org. 
any one of those three areas you can partner with us. And we just trust God with you that as you partner with us, that you're going to experience God as your source in a Amen. whole new way. Amen. And he's going to multiply the seed that you sow mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. So we Amen. thank God for you. We're going to be back here again tomorrow at the same time. But remember this. Like this, like this broadcast and then share with your friends Amen. and let's see it continue to grow, 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 grow. Amen. But we believe God with you and I'm going to pray with you right now. Father, we, we agree right now for every seed that they're sowing in partnership in this ministry. Yes. Father. That is abounding in their lives. Fruit is abandoned to their account, yes, and it's a sweet-smelling savor Father. coming before you, God. And I'm agreeing with them, Father, according to Philippians 4.19, that you, our God, at the level of an apostle, God, are meeting their need according to your riches yes. in glory by Christ Jesus. They're relying fully on you for their prosperity because of their partnership. Yes, in Father. Jesus' name, in Jesus amen, amen and amen. amen. Well, praise God, been a great blessing. Amen. And we're going to be back with you again at the exact same time on uh, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Invite your friends and uh, share this, and we look forward to seeing you again on tomorrow. Remember these three things. Number one, stay focused. Stay focused. Don't let it pull you out of the way. Number two, stay in your lane. In your Don't lane. try to do things that you ain't called to do. All right. Amen. And number three, keep moving forward. Move forward. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> this is Apostle Alfred Craig. And Dr. Bev. Say until God. may God's riches and, and his, his very best, best be yours. yours. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye now. Have a great day.